Hello and thanks for watching. I'm Dayweather Meteorologist Don Day of Dayweather Incorporated. And today, our video update is going to talk about our long range forecast. We're going to take a look at the fall, winter, and spring seasons and what the weather will do across not only the Rocky Mountain West, but all of the lower 48 states. This is going to be a weather pattern over the coming months that will be dominated by a very well developed El Nino weather pattern. Let's now take a look at our month to month forecast all the way into the spring of 2016. Let's first of all take a look at sea surface temperatures in the Pacific. And right here in the area between South America and Australia is El Nino. It's a well developed El Nino. You can see it in the orange and the red and the yellow. Anywhere you see those colors, water temperatures are above normal. The Pacific is very warm and when the Pacific is warm, there's more moisture available in the atmosphere during the fall and winter season to move into portions of the United States. This is a very well developed El Nino, the strongest since 97 and 98. It won't be as strong as that year, but this one will come close and will have a big impact on the fall and winter and spring seasons looking forward. Now let's take a look at the month of September. We're looking at the coolest temperatures in this purple area here in the Southern Plains, the Southern Rockies. This is due to an active amount of subtropical moisture still coming up out of old Mexico. We're going to see more tropical activity in the desert Southwest, even maybe into Southern California at times during the month of September. Warmer than normal across the Northern Rockies and the Northern Plains states. September though, it's going to be a month where temperatures are going to be close to average for many areas. In Wyoming, Colorado, and Nebraska, do watch out for the middle and the end of the month to bring a couple of shots of colder weather. I think unlike last year in 2014, where we had a pretty mild September and October, well, later this month and into October, things are going to change, and we're likely going to see a colder early fall than we have in the past year. And speaking of October, this will be a, an important month. For Wyoming, Colorado, and Nebraska, this area is going to experience a colder than normal October and a snowier than normal October as well. This will be important for the sugar beet harvest in Colorado, Wyoming, Nebraska, as well as Montana, as we could be looking at some cold, wet weather. So sugar beet growers keep that in mind. Stock growers keep in mind that this October is going to be a little bit rough. As we have seen in previous El Nino years, where El Nino is this strong, along with some other factors, that we can have a stormy and cold October. Let's now look at November. A lot of the cold that is in October shifts a little bit further east into the Corn Belt, the Midwest, the Great Lakes, while the West Coast begins to warm up. Those warm Pacific waters keeping the West Coast warmer than normal this fall season and into the winter as well. We'll likely see Early November cold in Colorado, Wyoming, and Nebraska with temperatures moderating towards the end of the month. And that's going to lead into a classic El Nino pattern for December. What we show here in December is below normal temperatures and above normal precipitation for Southern California through the Southern Rockies, Southern Plains, and into the Southeast United States, while the northern half of the nation has above normal temperatures in December. For Wyoming, it's going to be a mild December. Same for Nebraska, Colorado as well. Not going to be a great month in December for the snowpack buildup or for the ski industry in the northern and central Rockies, as snow will be a bit thin. As we get into the time frame of January through March, we're going to put those three months together. And this is where we'll tend to see some of the bigger El Nino impacts take place. During this time frame, January through March, that's when California has the chance to pick up significant rainfall and hopefully alleviate the drought. You're going to see enhanced storminess across the southern tier of the country, through Colorado, the Four Corners region, New Mexico, the southern plains of Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, then across the southeast United States. It could be a snowy and cold winter along the Appalachians, through the mid-Atlantic, and portions of the eastern seaboard. Here in the Pacific Northwest, Montana, the Northern Rockies, the Dakotas, and into the Northwestern Great Lakes, it will be a warmer than normal January through March. Now, for Wyoming and Colorado, we're probably not going to see a lot of snow in January. It'll be another warm, dry month relative to normal. As we get into February and especially March, this area of blue may expand into southern and central Wyoming and further into Nebraska, as especially late February and March, and El Nino's in the past, 
we can get a very active southern jet stream, which produces these larger upslope storms, but it probably won't be until March at the earliest late February before that happens. And that's gonna lead into what will be a more wet pattern for Wyoming, Colorado, and Nebraska getting into the April, May, June timeframe. Now let's take a look at precipitation over this whole period. From November through March, we see much below normal, well below normal precipitation in the Pacific Northwest, Idaho, Western Montana, then across the Northern tier. This part of the nation in an El Nino pattern like this will have a warmer and drier than normal winter. Across the Southern states, along the Eastern seaboard, above normal precipitation, the Southern Plains could see significant precipitation and hopefully California as well, although Northern California may be left out. You're likely gonna see a big snow year in central and southern Colorado, the mountains of New Mexico and Arizona, Big Bend area of Texas, and into the southern plains will have one of their wetter winters and snowier winters than we've seen in a while.